குருஞ்சி சீனியர் செகண்டரி ஸ்கூல் சிபிஎஸ்இ நாமக்கல் சக்சஸ்ஃபுல் ரிசல்ட் ப்ரொடியூசிங் ஸ்கூல் இன் ஸ்டேட் எவ்ரி இயர் அட்மினிஸ்டர்ட் பை தி போர்ட் ஆஃப் டைரக்டர்ஸ் வித் ஓவர் 35 இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் இன் தி டீச்சிங் ஃபீல்ட் ஸ்பெஷல் அட்டென்ஷன் ஆன் ஆர்ட் கிராஃப்ட் மியூசிக் டான்ஸ் சிலம்பம் யோகா ஸ்கேட்டிங் அண்ட் கராத்தே ஃபோகஸ் ஆன் ஹிந்தி சபா அண்ட் ஸ்பெல் பி ஒலிம்பியாட் எக்ஸாம்ஸ் ஸ்மார்ட் கிளாஸ் ஃபார் எஃபெக்டிவ் அண்ட் இனோவேட்டிவ் லேர்னிங் அண்ட் வெல் ஃபர்னிஷ்ட் லைப்ரரி சாலிட்டரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆன் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் கேம்ஸ் இன் ஸ்டேட் அண்ட் நேஷனல் லெவல் வாட்ஸ்அப் facilities to know activities of students and school inside the campus free bus for lkg to 8th standard free hygienic and nutritious food neat jee iit coaching experts from rajasthan and andhra pradesh along with our effective teachers admission registration for classes lkg to plus 2 kurunji education institution kaveti patti namakkal admission in progress cbse kg to 12th contact 9025895176 metric 6212th contact 9344567484 for online admission log on to www.kurunjischoolnkl.in hi students good morning to all in this session we are going to discuss limitations of valence bond theory uh, already in my previous session i completed the entire the formations of the complex compounds based on the vbt theory from octahedral manner and tetrahedral manner and also square planar manner but uh, actually vbt theory is a very uh, familiar theory to explain the structure of and complexes of the coordination compound but it has some limitation now we are going to discuss what type of limitations are there uh, what are they the entire the information we will discuss in this session now see here limitations of valency bond theory the valence bond theory was fairly successful in explaining qualitatively the geometry and the magnetic properties of complexes however it has a number of limitation actually my dear students you know that very well Uh, the vbt theory even in octahedral manner or tetrahedral manner or square planar manner it's clearly to be explained fairly ex- successfully explained qualitatively geometry so what kind of the geometry square planar or tetrahedral planar octahedral planar it's very clearly to be explained not only this one even magnetic properties are also explained you know if any one of the complex central metal atom after formation of the coordination compound unpaired electrons are there it is paramagnetic behavior and paired completely paired in the electrons in orbital it's a diamagnetic behavior so the complete information regarding to the geometry and magnetic properties it's very clear to be explained in this vbt theory but it has some limitations my dear students it has some limitation the first limitation see it involve a number of assumptions lot of the assumptions are there it's involved number of assumption for example this theory does not provide a quantitative interpretations of the stability of the complexes interpretations of the stability of the con- uh, complexes this theory does not provided a quantitative interpretations of the stability of the complexes and second important point i am morally to say this point the pairing of electron again uh, again is to hund's rules under the influence of strong ligand it's not properly defined in this theory the theory does not provide satisfactory explanation as to why at one time the electron must be rearranged against the hund rule while at the other time the electronic configuration it's not distributed so this uh, creates unnecessarily problem in the deciding the geometry of the complexes so this is the second point but i didn't written here so see here first point it involve a number of assumptions and it does not give quantitative interpretations of the magnetic data quantitative interpretation actually according to this theory if any one of the complex compound contain unpaired electron it's a paramagnetic 
paired electrons it is a diamagnetic but there is no any quantitative interpretations of the magnetic data that is the basical limitations of vbt theory okay now next third point sinana it does not explain the color exhibited by coordination compound so in this theory very clearly explain a geometry and magnetic property but magnetic properties also not explain the quantitatively interpretations of the based on magnetic data but basically if unpaired electrons are present in this compound that is a paramagnetic behavior and uh, pa paired electrons are present in the central metal atom after formation of the covalent bond it's a diamagnetic behavior but the major important drawback in this theory color exhibited by coordination compound why different type of the coordination compound can be existed different type of the color compounds but why even one point is also not explain why the coordination compound showing different type of the color behavior he didn't explain that's why it does not explain the color exhibited by the coordination compounds next fourth important point my dear students it does not give a quantitative interpretations of the thermodynamics or kinetic stability of the coordination compounds you know most important point it's cannot explain this theory is not clearly explain the thermodynamics or kinetic stability of the coordination compound there is no proper information regarding to the kinetic stability of the coordination compound if they are approaching to the ligands are approaching to the central metal atom ligands are donated the lone pair of electron to the central metal atom after that coordination covalent bond or day two bonds are formed in between of the central metal atom and ligand that is explained only but uh, how the coordination compounds are become stable based on the thermodynamics rules and regulations or kinetic stabilization he can't explain properly can't explain properly that is a most important point my, my dear student and one more important point is it is unable to account for the detailed magnetic properties of the complexes already clearly explain this point so it is unable to account for the detailed magnetic properties of complexes and it lacks to explain the behavior of d8 ions for example nickel 2 plus or lead 2 plus rm 2 plus etc in the forming the expected four coordination complexes why does not theory prefer square planar structure over tetrahedral or otherwise is not logically that is also another point the next e point see here fifth point he does not make exact prediction regarding to tetrahedral and square planar structure of four coordination complexes see why the coordination compound if maybe contains four coordination number why they can existed tetrahedral and square planar they cannot predicted properly but they, they uh, in this theory vbt theory suggested uh, if any one of the complex compound contain four coordination number either tetrahedral manner or existed or square planar manner or existed what is the re reason why exact prediction he didn't to explain regarding to coordination number 4 that's why my dear students see here uh, fifth point it does not make exact prediction regarding to the tetrahedral and square planar structure of four coordination complexes okay ma next one f point it does not distinguish between weak and strong ligands he suggested simply uh, you know that very well water is the weak ligand a fluorine is a weak ligand like that but why this like what is the basic differentiation between why some ligands are very strong some ligands are very weak and moreover if the strong ligands are approaching to the central metal atom the central metal atom unpaired electron paired up but uh, weak ligands approaching to the central metal atom the central metal atom 
unpaired electron not paired up what is the reason this information is also not explained in vbt theory so fifth point nano one second my dear student if it does not distinguishes between weak and strong ligands and why whenever strong ligands approaching to the center metal atom the unpaired electrons are paired up why weak ligands approaching to the central metal atom central metal atom it's not why uh, paired up that's also not explained and g point it does not explain the splitting of d orbital of central metal atom when the ligands approaching it for example ipo ligands are approaching to the central metal atom actually electrostatistic forces are formed but uh, if the electrostatistic forces are formed means according to crystal field theory and uh, why d orbital is are not sp splitting that is also not explained very clearly whenever ligands are approaching to the central metal atom why the d orbital from the central metal atom not splitting it cannot be explained and last and final drawback my dear students it is unable to interpret the absorptions of the complexes that is the most important point nana it is unable to interpret the absorptions of complexes and uh, another important point my dear students sometimes the theory required the transfer of electron from the lower energy level to higher energy level which is not uh, logical in the absence of an energy supply these are the these are the important drawbacks of the limitations of uh, vbt theory however actually here some limitations are there but uh, this theory are successfully explanation of quality qualitatively geometry and magnetic properties so it has some limitation but it is also clearly to be explained regarding to all kind of the geometries all kind of the geometries okay na okay these are the most important most important points now see here the next one is uh is already i successfully completed the limitations of vbt theory and uh, formations of the complex compound in octahedral manner tetrahedral manner and also square planar now the another important one is uh, magnetic properties of coordination compound my dear students in these two important points limitations of valency bond theory and magnetic properties of Uh, coordination compound this completely based on ncert textbook information so the same information it is not visible properly in this video and you will see in your cbse textbook okay magnetic properties of coordination compound actually you know how to calculate magnetic property i am clearly to be teached in the d and f block elements uh, chapters yes or no because of most of the coordination compounds are belonging to the transitional metals but uh, how to calculate magnetic momentum in the coordination compounds i am very clearly to explained in the chapter of d and f block element just one time you revise but here some important points are present regarding to magnetic properties of the d block uh, ma magnetic properties of the coordination covalent bonds now see here Uh, complexes coordination covalent uh, coordination compounds now see here magnetic properties of coordination compound the ma the magnetic momentum of the coordination compound can be measured mu is equal to long root of n into n plus 2 bm so here n is nothing but unpaired electron you know that very well and bm is nothing but uh, bohr bohr magneton see instead of this formula na no? one more formula is also there mu is equal to long root of n into n plus 2 or bm or another wise one more formula n plus 0.8 bm so instead of this formula you can use this formula also n plus 0.8 bm where n is number of unpaired electron in the central metal atom or ion and bm is a bohr magneton 
it is a unit of the magnetic momentum it is a bm is the unit of the magnetic momentum now see carefully here a critical study of the magnetic data of coordination compound of metals of the first transitional series reveals some complications see actually my dear students whenever you will teach coordination compound magnetic momentum coordination compound magnetic momentum but uh, initially initially the first transitional series is reveals some complications so whenever you will start uh, d block element to magnetic properties d block elements is nothing but coordination compound whenever you will start d block element magnetic properties some complications start from the first transitional series for example see here see nana a critical study of the magnetic data of coordination compound of metal of the first transitional series reveals some complication for metal ion with up to 3 electron the d orbital like titanium 3 plus and vanadium 3 plus and chromium 3 plus ipo titanium 3 plus na 1 d orbital uh, d orbital contain only one electron vanadium 3 plus na d orbital contain two electrons and chromium 3 plus na d orbital contain three three uh, electrons in the d orbital two vacant d orbitals are available for the octahedral hybridization with 4s and 4p orbital if any one of the first transitional element to show octahedral behavior in the geometry point of view coordination compound they have contain 4s and 4p orbital unpaired electron the magnetic behavior of these free ions and their coordination entity is similar if any one of the coordination compound 4s orbital or 4p orbital contains unpaired electron the magnetic behavior of these free ions and their coordination entity is similar when sinana when more than 3 3d electrons are present when more than it's not visible properly means just you see your test book nana when more than 3 3d electrons are present when more than 3 3d electrons are present the required pair of 3d orbital of octahedral hybridization it's not directly available it's not direct available for example if the d4 orbitals d4 d orbital contain four electron na cr2 plus mn3 plus da for d5 na mn2 plus fe3 plus da d6 na fe2 plus and co cases so a vacant pair of d orbital resulted only by pairing of 3d electron which leaves to one and zero unpaired electron respectively the magnetic data agree with the maximum spin pairing in many cases especially with the coordination compound containing d6 ions however with species containing d4 and d5 ion there are complications in case of I must first listen the story later i will explain in case of mn cn6 3 minus has magnetic momentum of two unpaired electron while mn cl6 3 minus has paramagnetic momentum of four unpaired electron but uh, fe cn6 3 minus has magnetic momentum of single unpaired electron while fe f6 3 minus has para paramagnetic momentum of five unpaired electron five unpaired electrons and uh, mn cl6 3 minus has paramagnetic moment for four electrons and fe cn6 has uh, magnetic momentum of the single unpaired electron while fe f6 3 minus has paramagnetic momentum of the five unpaired electron co f6 3 minus is a paramagnetic with four unpaired electron while co c2 o4 taken three times overall bracket net charge three minus is a diamagnetic so the apparent ab uh, abnormally is explained by the valence bond theory in terms of formation of the inner orbital and the outer orbital coordination entity for example mn cn6 3 minus and fe cn6 3 minus and co c2o4 
taken 3, 3 minus or inner orbital complexes involved in the D to sp3 hybridization. The former two complexes are paramagnetic and their later diamagnetic. On the other hand, MnCl6-3- minus, FeF6-3- minus, and COF6-3- minus are outer orbital complexes involving the sp3d2 hybridization and are paramagnetic corresponding to 4, 5 and uh, 4 unpaired electron. This is the actually the complete information regarding to magnetic properties of the coordination compound. Actually my dear students, here most important key point now, if d orbital contains unpaired electron, actually you know that very well, d orbital contains unpaired electron, it is showing the paramagnetic behavior. If there is no any unpaired electrons are present in the complexes, it is a diamagnetic. But here, if the unpaired electrons are increasing in the d orbital, the unpaired electrons are increases in the d orbital, the paramagnetic behavior is also increases paramagnetic behavior is also increases. That is why my dear students, all kind of the complex compound does not show to same kind of the paramagnetic. If some of the complexes has d orbital contain one unpaired electron, one kind of paramagnetic behavior and two unpaired electron, one kind of paramagnetic behavior, three unpaired electron, one kind of the paramagnetic behavior. For example, five unpaired electron, more paramagnetic behaviors are existed. So, that is the basic reason in the coordination compound, my dear student. Whenever you calculated magnetic momentum of the coordination compound or transitional elements, the formula is mu is equal to long root of n into n plus 2 Bm. These are the magnetic properties of complex compounds. Okay, Nana. So, now uh, in this session, I completed limitations of valence bond theory and uh, magnetic properties of coordination compounds and uh, uh, next session uh, in my next class I will be continue the most another important theory to explain the formation of coordination compound after VBT valence bond theory crystal field theory my dear students crystal field theory is a very very important okay ma'am